Let's talk about the relentless heat. We know it has not been an isolated event. The entire globe is reporting hot temperatures, both land and water. July goes down as the warmest month on record. Climate scientists are measuring the three warmest weeks on record right now. Satellites detect some of the hot ocean temperatures. Could be unprecedented territory. And it does sound like a broken record. What's really happening here is the big question. There are several factors that you can look to. Do you remember back in January, we had this, this powerful undersea volcano? It was January 2022. It was almost a year and a half ago. It was in the Southern Pacific Ocean, this eruption. I remember because we looked at the pictures from space here on Fox Weather. Satellite images captured this. It's the Hunga Tonga eruption. And it literally sent shockwaves reverberating around the world, as volcanoes can do. They can create even earthquakes. Scientists called this one of the most uh, climatic events of the past three decades. And maybe this is contributing to the heat that we're seeing right now. Thoughts on this? Because, you know, earlier this year, we did have researchers in the Journal of Nature Climate Change say the powerful explosion ejected the water vapor from the ocean right into the stratosphere. And we know that the water vapor is a greenhouse gas that warms the planet. Could that be adding to all the hot temperatures we're seeing land and water? Let's bring in Professor of Marine Geosciences, Sam Perkis from the University of Miami. You've studied the Hunga Tonga eruption. Uh, join us here for a discussion. Sam, volcanoes, they have large impacts on the climate. Is that what could potentially be tied to the heat that we have now? Well, thanks for the invitation to talk to you. Volcanoes are interesting and in yes, they do affect the climate and actually typically they cool the climate because of the sulfur dioxide that volcanoes uh, release in the plume, which is ejected. Uh, the eruption in Tonga was curious that it was rather lean in sulfur dioxide, so the cooling effect was muted, but it put a lot of water vapor very high in the atmosphere, right up into the stra stratosphere. And, of course, water vapor is a potent greenhouse gas and will cause a temporary warming. And uh, that appears to be measurable, as was published in this paper you just mentioned. Yeah, it's fascinating because, uh, like you just mentioned, when I think about the volcanoes of the past and even historic ones, we've tied those to cooling situations. So it's such an exactly. interesting headline. What made this one so powerful that it was able to eject that water vapor um, as a greenhouse gas in, in such a powerful and dramatic way? What, what made that happen? Well, it was an absolutely huge eruption, and that's what we've been working on and studying. And it contends probably for the largest natural explosion on the planet for more than a century. I mean, this was really, really a huge explosion. And the depth of the volcano beneath the sea surface was exactly right to allow that explosion to propagate to the maximum extent and literally blast that overlying column of seawater up into the atmosphere to incredible heights. I mean, normally volcanic eruptions don't reach the stratosphere. This is more than 12 kilometers up into the atmosphere, but this one, you know, penetrated that layer. It was extremely powerful. Your focus as a researcher, uh, your learning has surrounded this particular volcano. How do you feel about it being attached to potentially this global warming influence or part of the argument? Because sometimes we use weather events and it, it, weather can be weaponized against these arguments, but there's become big political um, stances. How do you feel about this volcano maybe being attached to that kind of concept? Well, I think it's well accepted volcanoes moderate the climate. I mean, let's be clear, we're on a lo long-term trajectory of warming uh, at the global scale. That's very clear. And there's always ancillary factors which are nudging towards the warmer or nudging towards the cooler. And typically, volcanoes are the latter. They serve to cool the atmosphere. But in this case, because it was a, a submarine explosion, not too much sulfur dioxide, we have a push towards the warmer. But it's going to be temporary and somewhat localized to the Pacific area. And we can, we can there, there will always be these ancillary effects. But this particular one will probably last one or two years. But anyway, we're on a warming climate. And so these record temperatures that the planet is experiencing, you know, were to be expected. We may just have got there a couple of years earlier than would otherwise if this explosion hadn't have happened. Fascinating to get your perspective. We appreciate the research that you're doing there on the Hunga Tonga volcano. Professor of Marine Geosciences, Sam Perkis, thanks for being on Fox Weather. Thank you so much.
I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.